Good evening and welcome back to our Bible study in 2 Timothy. Um, tonight as we uh, begin, let me, let me start with just reminding us that um, 2 Timothy is Paul's last letter. It is his, uh, it's his swan song, it's, it's his goodbye. It contains some things that we're about to get to. We're actually now moving into the last part of the last letter. And as we do, it makes sense, if you think about it, that uh, Paul would address this, uh, uh, the, the subject of the last days. Many believe, and I would be in the crowd, that would say that uh, the New Testament writers and the characters of the New Testament, the gospel writers, the, uh, Paul who wrote much of the New Testament, others whose story or, or uh, a bit of their story appears in the book of Acts. Many of those who lived in the first century, um, it's, it's certainly uh, easy to, to uh, believe or understand that they believe they were living in the last days and that some of them would actually be alive at the return of Christ. Uh, we, we now know 2,000 years later that was not the case but they believe that. And so Paul is writing, uh, and when he addresses end times, it is important for us to think about the fact that uh, he, is, uh, he is believing that those end times are, uh, are uh, imminent. And so when we, as we pick up chapter 3 tonight, and that's where the, the transition to now, Paul said what he needed to say. And now he's going to start focusing on what will come. And in, in, first of all, what will come in terms of uh, the end of history. And then secondly, what will come in terms of the end of his life. So uh, chapter 3 begins to discuss these last days. He does it first of all with verse 1. But know this, difficult times will come in the last days. Um, I don't know what the days before were. I know these were very difficult days. Church history is quite clear that Nero uh, was uh, heinously persecuting the church. Uh, the last days was a phrase that was used uh, in various ways at various times. It, it really is sort of a technical term that was used in the New Testament to speak of the last days of the church. When it's used in the Old Testament, uh, it typically would refer to the great tribulation or the last days of God's uh, program with Israel. So the Old Testament, which was uh, God's program with Israel at the time when, when the Old Testament mentions last days, it jumps forward because the Old Testament prophets, the writers of the Old Testament, really didn't have a concept of the church. They didn't understand uh, that Jesus was going to come. They looked for the Messiah. They, they still are in Orthodox Judaism looking for the Messiah, but they, they didn't grasp what he was teaching about his church. So the Old Testament's last days are in the future. The New Testament's last days are the days in which we are living. And, and this is the New Testament uh, end of the age or last days, these last moments that that are mentioned. <clears throat> and these last days are quite different for the church than the last days will be for Israel after uh, the rapture of the church. And there are differing views on that. I can only speak to you from my perspective and, and my understanding. Uh, what I would say to you tonight is this. We, we've had 1,900 years of, uh, or 2,000 years now, of, of descriptions that, um, that are really found in, in, a, in, in just a few verses. But we see that it is a very difficult day. We know that in these verses there is an ugly brood that uh, are, will always be... Um, fighting against and charging against the church. It's a very scriptural picture, I believe, of what we experience today. I, I know the persecution of Nero, uh, we would say unprecedented. We use that word quite a bit. But these are very difficult days as well on the church. We, 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 can't, we can't forget that the church is not just in the South, in America, in, the, in, 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 in today's world. 
it, it, they're believers in places that are uh, being persecuted, uh, martyred for their death in unimaginable ways. And so uh, you and I may not face some of the depth of the persecution that other believers are facing, but we certainly know uh, some of that. So in the last days, difficult times will come, and that has been true now for over 2,000 years. Verse 2 says, For people will be lovers of self, lovers of money, boastful, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, ungrateful, unholy, unloving, irreconcilable, slanderers without self-control, brutal without love for what is good, traitors, reckless, conceited, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God, holding to the form of religion but denying its power. Avoid these people. Nineteen of them are listed. Nineteen different uh, character traits that um, are uh, just uh, horrible character traits and character traits that are absolutely on the news every single evening. So we are living in those days, and uh, children that are that are uh, that have been born since the fall have known something about these days, and certainly uh, right in the heart of the of these 19 uh, different character traits, right? The heart of it is this idea of, of sin, and sin has right in the middle of it, I, just like pride has right in the middle of it, I. Uh, and children at a very young age, pick. you don't have to teach them to be uh, prideful, and you don't have to teach them to sin. And you say, well, how can a, how can a two-year-old be prideful? Uh, walk into any any church nursery where these two year olds uh, are playing in the floor, and one of them has a toy and the other one wants it and grabs it and one snatches it back and and one will say mine 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 and the other will say mine 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 that that is uh, that is a reflection of our proclivity towards sin because we've been born in, born with a with an Adamic nature and we act on that. So children don't have to be taught self-love. Uh, they, they actually, um, uh, we live in a culture now that promotes this idea. Uh, if you watch social media, we promote it ourselves. We, we talk about all of the, our successes. Rarely are our challenges listed on uh, our social media page. Um, evening news, the only negative things that they will do or the negative things that they will do, and they do many, by the way, but the, the negative things they do, always directed to someone else. It's always someone else's group, someone else's uh, 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 heritage, someone else's political beliefs. We, we can talk about all of the nasty in the world, but it's always someone else's nasty. Rarely do we talk about our own nasty, and yet that's... That's what it means that uh, people are lovers of self. Lovers of money, that, that's not hard to understand. Um, today it seems that there's no match for us in history. Our national debt is beyond what our founding fathers could have even remotely imagined that we would ever allow ourselves to be that far in debt. Uh, but not just national debt, in individual debt is at an all-time high Students get out of college with just enormous piles of debt. Uh, young couples who want to live the lifestyle their parents are living without the work that it took to get there. And so credit card debt is uh, off the charts. The idea of working and saving and paying for what you want as you go, it's been replaced by debt. Um, I, I remember as a kid, we, we weren't we were we were not people of means, and 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 my mom would often at, at Christmas and at other times um, would go into a store that had a layaway plan, so she could pay a little along, and then when it was all paid off, she'd be able to receive it. That that was the store's way of getting their money, and then and and people having to uh, being sort of forced to def, uh, sort of deferred gratification. That's not the case anymore. You just, you, you, as soon as you qualify for a credit card, you plop that down. And when, when college is near the end of a semester, credit card companies and banks line the halls trying to, trying to lure those college students into taking their credit card. They've got the best plan. And, and then once you're in debt, then, then you're, you're, uh, you're stuck. As, as a matter of fact, 
I believe that the world would say we have these so-called wealthy families. I don't know what anybody makes, but they'll point out someone. They'll say these are wealthy uh, families, and they have they have the nice cars and the big homes and the and the best of everything and designer clothes and and, and the whole works. But they are one catastrophic event away from from losing everything they have, and by being in being in debtors. Uh, it, it, what, what some call debtor's hell, and, and, and that would be where they have to file for bankruptcy, and I, I don't understand those terms necessarily. But I will say that 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 is the that is indicative of a of a of a, uh, a culture that that thrives on the love of money. Then he then he uses the word boasters. Inflated egos abound in the circles of those who have great influence. Uh, to say that we live in the world of boasters, that'd be an understatement. Egomaniacs, yes. Narcissistic, yes. Self-absorbed, yes. They want to be worshipped in mass. Um, athletes, politicians, movie stars, anybody we say is famous, they can't get enough of themselves. And uh, we see it uh, time and time again. And, and we're living in the last days where there are boasters. The, the word for proud presents the idea of that you are better than someone else because of where you were born or because of the color of your skin or because of the, the job that you have or because of the uh, school you attended or the education or where you live in town, all those things. Um, and everybody's got an opinion about that, on, on, again, on social media. But I think their opinion of... Uh, themselves lead to inflated egos. Then it, and then that inflated ego leads to blasphemy because uh, if you raise yourself up to be uh, this superhero, uh, you become God, and, and that makes you a blasphemy. You, you push God to the back seat. Um, parental rights, uh, haters of, of parents are disrespectful. Parental rights have basically all been removed, all but have been removed from the home. Um, children dictate what the family does. Uh, one, of the, one of the challenges for me as a pastor is to, is to know that the, the children are calling the shots. And, if, and when I was a, a kid, if I could call the shots, I'd call it the same way. I, the disciplines required to, to uh, reach um, uh, adulthood seem to be disappeared. We, we talk about the discipline to do what you want to do, but discipline means you do what is right, not what you want, but what is what is right. Um, children no longer view their parents as authority figures. I, I had a, a, circum, a situation come up several years ago in a church that I served. Uh, one of the deacons and I were having a conversation. Their little daughter, maybe six, five, six years old, four years old, maybe four or five years old, Daughter walked up and said, uh, called him by his name, hey, Keith. And uh, they talked a minute, and I said, she calls you Keith? Is that normal? And he said, oh, yeah, we, we just use first names in our in our home. Well, I, I don't, you know, that's everybody's got an opinion about things. I certainly have one. But I also know that we're not equals at home. You, you know, if you're the parents, you're not, you're, you're the parent. Certain things come with that, and, and certainly uh, teaching your children to be disciplined, disciplining them until they can be disciplined is the right thing for an adult to do. Uh, kids just view their parents often as uh, ATMs, not necessarily authority figures, but just a place where they can get what they need. Time Magazine, in an article several years ago uh, on juvenile crime, had this quote, said, a new remorseless Mutant juvenile seems to have been born. Think about that. A new remorseless mutant juvenile seems to have been born, and there is no more terrifying figure in America today. And I, and I would agree that, that it, is, it is terrifying to consider the direction that our nation is going because of the disrespect that, that juveniles have for those in authority. Ungrateful. I, I believe this is one of the attributes that we've lost. And if we could, if we could get this back, I think it would, it would transform much of, of uh, the world that we live in. The order of these 19 atrocities seems to be significant. Uh, so 
proud, boasters, leading to pride, leading to blasphemy, uh, leading to uh, a loss of respect for authority, uh, leads to ungrateful acts. So disrespectful children become ungrateful adults. And ingratitude is the result of uh, a person spending much of their life focused on themselves and what they deserve and what they don't have that they deserve, what they do have they deserve, instead of focusing on the blessings that come, not because they deserve it, but because they, they are blessed. We are blessed. I, I count it a blessing that I, I live in a land that has allowed me to be free to, to propagate the gospel and to, and to uh, achieve what little bit of, of wealth that, that I may have or material blessing that I may have. That's not to be taken for granted. Unholy means a loss of traditional values. We see that everywhere. Unloving means that uh, the same Paul who said you're lovers, you're lovers of self, lovers of money, lovers of pleasure, but when he says unloving, he, he means we are unloving toward one another. I believe that's Satan's counterfeit to what God has called love. It, it misplaces it. Instead of loving, uh, cre- loving the other uh, human being, we love, we love money and we love pleasure and we love, we love ourselves. Um, he uses words liars, uh, the brutal and those without devotion to that which is good, the, the personal attacks we see on, on the news, the uh, division within our country, uh, that divisive spirit that exists, that, that's, what, that's, what that, that's, where, that, that's where that rests. Um, then the, the word reckless is used. And in the last days, we are a culture that just seems to be running headlong into whatever the masses think brings pleasure. It's a crowd that is... Uh, in the last days, very, very secular in their mindset. They'll neglect the things of God while embracing things that might seem spiritual. And Paul said to avoid these people. And, and you and I may think it's impossible because they are everywhere. But when I, I read that, night, that list of 19 characteristics, I see every single one of them present in the world in which we live. Well... Uh, We can't just lament that. We've got to pray for God to bring healing. And that's what we do. And that's why the church exists. So I'll see you next week. Uh, We'll continue in uh, chapter 3, picking up at verse 6. Have a great week.